things to be enamored with in Polish forests. They've been a huge source of inspiration for me. It's just wherever you look, if you look closely enough, you'll find some tokens of rebirth. I've always wanted to surround myself with them. So, I've started doing just that. This is an impractically huge jewelry organizer. And hey, I'm pretty proud of it. Having had almost no experience with the polymer clay beforehand and approaching it from a standpoint of a person who just really wanted to do some creative stuff, I think I did a pretty good job. Inside there is a skeleton made of metal cord and aluminum foil and I made sure that the skeleton involved all those mushroom hoods and the hats so that um, they wouldn't break off after baking. And those magnificent, sweet raspberries that you can see down there, they are not made by me. I got them from my grandma who wanted to throw them away for some reason and I just begged her to give them to me. I'm in love with them. And more polymer clay because I just couldn't help myself and I bought a ton of it. I've seen so many incredible artists make masterpieces with, with tiny tools that require a lot of precision. And I'll be honest, I tried my best, but I can't just get the gist of it. I don't know if I'm just so bad with details or if my hands are shaky, if my hands are unsure of how to proceed. But the thing about sculpting nature is that it is irregular, it is imperfect, and it just looks beautiful because of it. None of these mushrooms or moss patches or branches require symmetry. So you can just do whatever, you know, and just hope for the best. These are toadstool buttons, which I'd initially been very proud of until they broke off and I realized how important metal wiring was. And for these ones, these are just polymer clay patches that I baked and painted over with acrylic paint. And the thing about painting nature is, again, you can't go wrong with it. And now, with the embroidery. Or needle painting. Saving every piece of embroidered or needle painted clothing on Pinterest has been my guilty pleasure for years. I've always wanted to master the craft because Come on, wearing a piece of art that you design yourself and you create yourself, how cool is that? So ultimately, after a trial and error, and after getting really mad at myself for not getting things right, I present to you these three pieces. I later sewed them together and gave them to a friend of mine. And then we've got this experiment here. I think it is really interesting, albeit probably not the prettiest. My idea here was to create an illusion of a jewel encased in a frame of sorts. So I wanted to create this illusion of gradients that go separate ways, that go in reverse to each other. You can probably tell that the color palette goes along with this idea. There are a lot of pinks and reds and purplish tones woven in between those browns of the mushrooms and even the background. And you can't really spot them at first because they are not very vibrant, there is not a lot of them, but because they are there, the greens are so vibrant. I'm not very proud of how the berries turned out because they are not very detailed and they were so thick at this point because they were an after choice um, that I really couldn't do much with them anymore. But I still think that overall the composition looks pretty good. I would change a lot of things, but you know, for an experiment without um, having thought of it too much, just going in and 
trying my best. I think it looks pretty neat. And here we go again. Facing an experiment that I really want to get down to. But one which will take a lot of my time. Months, if not years. It's definitely a side project and one which I'm going to put aside for long periods of time. But ultimately, it may turn out beautiful. This is how it all started, with needle-painted toadstools on a piece of felt. They were too big to become a brooch, too small to become a patch, and I didn't just want to discard them and hide them in the drawer. So I decided to sew them onto a bigger patch of canvas and try to expand on the world that I was seeing. Hey, can you see that? This is absolutely a purple thread. This stems from the idea that the less sunlight there is, the further from sunlight something is, the less yellowish tint there should be. So naturally, the color is cooler. And this part is symmetrical to the one with the toadstools. I wanted to make sure that the composition of the whole piece was well, sort of symmetrical, that there weren't too many huge discrepancies, just so uh, the entire piece would feel whole. And as you can see on the back side, there's very little thread waste. The plan is as follows. Basically, the shading I'm doing here is with warm grayish tint. This is basically an unsaturated dark nude tint. So this is the one that we're starting with because it's a little bit like painting. You start with dark colors because you want to work your way up to the light. This also works with the saturation of the colors. So I usually, well, I find myself working with neutral colors most of the time because it is way easier later to decide which parts of the painting, of the needle painting, obviously, need um, more vibrance and highlight. Once the mushrooms are done, you can see how the other elements are going to fall into place. I marked uh, the shape of the tree in the front with a very dark brown thread. From a distance, it already looks pretty good, but I wanted to make sure that you can see the details. The cool green creates an illusion of some blended flora in the background. So this is some bush, I guess. It does not blend with the forefront because it's cooler. And this dark green is much warmer. So it is a part of the forefront. It does not look like much, but when you take a step backwards, you can see that it creates this nice depth of the grass. This is also the first time that I had both pieces of reference together onto the canvas. And I used this opportunity to transfer the entirety of the sketch onto the canvas itself. As you can see, there is a hoof and there is a beautiful thick leg protruding from beneath the felt, so you can probably narrow it down and come up with a conclusion of which mythical creature is going to be walking in those woods once it's finished. I'm also going to have to leave out some of these felt patches because later, once it's all done, I'll transfer the character in its entirety onto the canvas. And that was the moment of truth for me. If those two pieces could work together, even though they were made on two different tins of felt, I could probably pull this entire thing off. I just had to make sure that the grass was blended well. Look at this magnificent grass! 
Isn't it beautiful? It flows like an ocean, as if you took a walk in the middle of summer in the deep woods and saw those beautiful waves of grass interlocking with each other. It's just, it's great. It was the first time that I felt really motivated because I could see that this project was probably going to work. If I just managed to pull off the background, it could, it could probably work. And this is when I realized I had a problem to face. As you can see, the felt is pretty thick. And in transition, when I was trying to blend the patches together, there were tiny bits of material that were unsupported by felt. And they were much, much thinner than the rest of them. And I didn't want to allow this to happen. It just, it didn't feel right because the canvas, if unsupported, had a very different texture and very different feel to it. And this is where my secret stash of felt residue comes into play. All of these scraps are too small to fit into embroidery hoops. And I had just collected them from previous projects and previous some brooches and patches because I didn't know what to do with them but I felt I had a feeling you know that one day they would become important and suddenly they did
This is the bottom part, a result of a few months of work, which is pretty rewarding, dare I say. It's been an off and on project, obviously, this is how much canvas is left, so I would say I'm like 30% through. And I'll gladly work my way up there. It's a long shot, but it grounds me. Let's see how it goes.